let's take things to the next level. This style combines high quality images, modern fonts, and an Apple inspired clean aesthetic to create something that looks premium, feels effortless, and grabs attention without overwhelming the viewer. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to edit a professional grade video that stands out from the rest. So I made all three videos you saw in the same way so that I can just show you how to make one and then you'll know how to make whatever you want from there. So I always start in Canva and take out the backgrounds of the images I find. So here's one of Drake, I can select edit and then background remover. And you can really use any tool you want to do this. And I usually always just start with a solid color of white. So I'm gonna drag that in, select the inspector. Next, I can drag in my picture of Drake, scale him down. So one thing I like to do with all my images is go to effects, open effects, and search for fast noise. Click that, drag it on, select default, and go to water surface. We're going to turn up the scale a little bit and then turn the contrast down to about 140. And so if we zoom in now and play the video, you can see that it makes the image come alive a little bit. So on Motionware, I found this 3D video of fans in the background. So I can simply drag that behind Drake. Now I'm gonna come over here and turn down the color a little bit. So I'm just gonna go to saturation and turn it down a little bit. So it looks like he's at a concert, so we should put in some flashing lights. So on Motionware, I also found this video of flashing blue lights. Let's drag that behind. And then we're gonna drag the opacity down. Another thing I'm going to do is go to effects, open effects, and drag on a Gaussian blur on the cheering crowd. I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. Now we can also come to our Drake image, select the color wheel, drag up the color boost, drag up the shadows a lot. You're going to see he pops out a lot more now. Mid-level detail up. So now we can add a word dropping in behind him. Effects, titles, text plus. Right, Drake. Size it up. Now before we change the font, something I'm going to do is go to transform size, and then drag the Y up so it's longer. Now, go to font and look for a font. This one looks cool, so I'm gonna select that one. We go to shading, gradient, select the first one. Second one, make it the same color, but a little bit darker, maybe something like that. Now we're gonna add two more sets of words so we can drag on another text plus clip. We can type in and and then we're gonna change this font to something called SQL Sans, right here. As you can see, it's a little bit hard to see, so we're gonna put a drop shadow on it. Drop distance to zero, strength up, and blur about right there. Now we're gonna duplicate this by holding Option and dragging up, type in do I. Now we can size this up so that both edges match the first text. So what we're gonna do with these first two are cut them right there so that when we turn this into a 3D environment, it takes a while for them to come in. So the first text, drag down, keyframe, go over a few frames, and then drag up. Now we're gonna go to the spline, click this dot, click this, and smooth it out. We're going to drag this just like this, and it should look like this. Second word is gonna come right after. Again, drag it down, keyframe, go over a few frames, and then drag up. Now we can animate this backward. First frame, drag it up, keyframe, Go over quite some time, right, right there, and we're just gonna drag it down. Again, we're going to drag this white thing so it kind of fades in, and now we have something that looks like that. So now, we can turn this into a 3D environment. First thing I'm gonna do is select these two, right click, new compound clip. Once we turn this into a 3D environment, the more layers you have, the more work it is. So anything that doesn't need to be its own layer can be put into one compound clip. You can select all of this, right click, and click new fusion clip. Once we head over to the Fusion page, we add in six image planes. We add in a Merge 3D and a Render 3D and a Camera 3D. So we're going to connect all the Median to the Image Plane, all the Image Plane to the Merge, Merge to the Render, and Render to the Media Out. And then we can just connect the Camera to the Merge. So once we select this white dot on the Merge, this is our 3D environment. Now we can select our camera and drag the camera back. This is what the final output's gonna look like. Now I'm gonna select the top image plane, which is our background. And I'm gonna move it backwards. And then I'm gonna go to Transform and I'm gonna scale it up. Now I'm gonna select the second image plane, which is the blue flashes. That I'm gonna drag backwards as well and scale it up. I'm gonna select the third image plane, which is the audience. Slightly move it back and scale it up. Now I'm gonna select the fourth image plane, which is the Drake text, and move it slightly backwards, just like that. I'm gonna select this image plane, which is Drake himself. 
We're going to bring him forward and scale him down. And then we're going to select this text, which is the last, and drag that just like this. And again, we're on the first frame here because this, this is where we want the camera to start. And as we animate the camera moving forward, we're also going to have the camera tilt down so that his cutoff of his image is never shown. So first frame, we have the camera selected. Um, we're going to keyframe the zoom, which is it moving forward. So we've keyframed that. We're going to go to about here and then we're going to drag the camera forward. As you can see, it looks very 3D. We can come back to the first frame and we're going to keyframe the X position and then come back to where the camera zoom ends, which is frame 45. And then we're going to drag that down just to about here. And so now from frame one to frame 45, the camera is both moving in and tilting down. And that's how you can get basically any image to fit without it getting cut off. So now we're going to go to our spline, I'll make sure everything's checked, hit this little box, zoom out, select everything and press S. I like to drag the, the zoom, the first one, all the way in, just like this, so that the video starts with an aggressive zoom. And then I like to drag the ending out so that it's smooth. And then one thing I'm gonna do is go to generators, drag on a solid color, change it to white, and then drag this white thing all the way back. So it kind of starts white and fades in. And so now you should have something that looks like this. So now I'm back into the Fusion tab and what we can do to kind of transition out of this is animate the camera sliding off and it will give it kind of a cool 3D look. Once you have your camera selected, you come to the frame where you want it to slide off, select transform, keyframe X, go where you want to end and then drag the camera to the side. So now let's make this scene. So we're gonna drag in a solid color, change the color to a light blue, kind of like this. Then we're going to select our sand, size this down and to the bottom. We're going to go to effects, open effects and drag a Gaussian blur on the sand and turn it down a little bit. We're gonna to go to jitter.video, select the tweet animation. And as you can see, I've customized it to look like Drake by just selecting this drop down, double clicking, and then it lets you change everything. You can just change the lettering, change the image, and download it. Now we can drag it into our software, size it down, and drag it up a little bit. It makes for a pretty nice animation. So now we can take our second Drake image, size him down, We're going to go to the color tab, and hit the color wheel, drag up the shadows quite a bit, highlights quite a bit, color boost, and mid-level detail. Now we can go to effects, select open effects, and search for the fast noise again, drag that on, and select water surface, turn the contrast down to about 140. Now we can add in the words, so I'd say once this animation is done, about right here, add in a text plus, we can type found, switch the font to SQL Sans, size it up, open effects, and drag on the drop shadow, size this down a little bit, drag it over to the side, just like this. Hold down option and drag up and duplicate it. And for this one, we're gonna type in the, size it up so both of the sides match the first. And then again, we're gonna go over a few frames over and drag up. And we're gonna change the font of this one to a font called Bitcraft and write sand. And then this one, you can change it to whatever color you want. I might just do a yellow, just like that. Now we're gonna animate all words moving up. And then with all of these, we're going to drag this white thing so they kind of fade in. So now we have something that looks like this. Perfect. So I skipped ahead a little bit because I just showed how to do this, but basically you build out your 3D environment and you drag all your pieces out and you animate the camera moving in forward. So now if you put them together, you should have something that looks like this, right? But as you can see, this doesn't look very appealing. So all we're gonna do is add an adjustment clip, add a blur onto it and fade in the edges it looks a little bit more clean because it it's not hard edges, it's just kind of blur. And then it goes into this. So now for the last part of the animation, we're gonna build this. Solid color, white, just like this. We're gonna go back to our friend jitter.video and I found this app animation and it lets you change the color and the logo and this just saves me a bit of time. Say you wanted to do this with something that wasn't an app logo, uh, you could still do it. You just have to animate it yourself, which is pretty easy. Um, but I'm gonna download this. I'm gonna drag it in, I'm going to size it down. And as you can see, it's a bit short. I'm gonna go to the last frame, cut it, go to the clip and select freeze frame. And now we can drag out this frame as long as we want, 
just like that. And then we can select these two and turn it into a compound clip. And so once it starts going down, right about here, I'm going to select position and I'm going to go over a couple of frames and drag that up. Now I can select this and smooth that animation out. So now we have something that looks like this. Now for a bit of a design element, I'm going to add in a second solid color. I'm going to make it black. I'm going to turn that into a compound clip. I'm going to drag it down. Now I'm going to go to open effects and I'm going to apply the waviness to it. I'm going to select horizontal, turn the scale down. So now it looks like it's water a little bit fast. Turn the speed down. Once this app starts moving up, I'm going to animate this all the way down. Click the keyframe, go to where the app animation ends and drag it up. I'm going to leave the same amount of space that this has right here. So I'm going to try and just eyeball it right about there. We have something that looks like this. So I found this button on Motion Array and I'm just going to place it where these animations end and I'm going to scale it down. So if you combine all those together, you should have something that looks like this. So the key here is to keep things simple and don't be scared to play around a little bit before you turn things into a 3D environment because once you turn them into the 3D environment, the fusion clip, you can't go back and uh, adjust anything. So I take my time when I'm creating out the scene, I keep things simple, add lots of little effects. So as long as you do that, you'll end up with something pretty good. Mm -hmm.